If you walk around the main floor of Cathedral of the Deep while embered up before you beat the boss, you'll be invaded by a familiar looking NPC. Kirk was originally in Dark Souls 1 and he's notorious for his super cool looking armor and his fetish for helpless monster girls. Once you kill Kirk, he'll drop both his shield and his sword. After this, it's time to head up to the roof. Once on the roof, you'll find this doorway that leads to the rafters. Once in the rafters, you want to drop down to this little overhang, and then you want to drop down again onto the balcony below. Alright, these disgusting looking half men, half grub things are completely unique to the area around Rosaria's bedchamber. They're automatically hostile, so don't be afraid to attack them, and they're weak to fire. Also, they like to mob in groups, so be careful when attacking them head on. So besides having gross attacks like being able to puke on you, I find that just them burning is equally as disturbing as them crawling around and flopping about like they usually do. So naturally, I didn't hesitate at all to kill every single one of them that I saw immediately. And it was only after I went on this mini genocide that I actually started to look around the area. So while looking around, I noticed that there are more of these grub men that have already been killed and they're actually nailed to the floors and walls, almost like a crucifixion. And there's actually about a couple dozen of them just nailed all over the place, all around this giant set of doors with the, gate, uh, with the gate around it. And I think that it's actually supposed to be some kind of message, saying that these things are disgusting and that's why they're plastered around, dead all over the place, that almost like they're not supposed to be alive. So naturally I did what any sane human would and I started looking at their feet and you can actually see that they, they have toes and toenails, that their legs came together to fuse this sack-like thing. These things were definitely human at one point. Finally, past this torn open cage, we open the door and enter Rosaria's bedchamber. So the first thing you'll notice about this room is probably all the cribs scattered around the place. There's even some hanging from the ceiling. And this really pushes the idea that Rosaria, the mother of rebirth, is first and foremost a maternal figure. On the ground, right next to Rosaria's inner chamber, we'll find the armor of thorns in Kirk's body identical to how we found him in the first game next to Kulena. And then finally, on her bed, we'll find Rosaria, the mother of Rebirth. Here you can join the Rosaria's Fingers Covenant. We can also see her coddling one of those grub men things, again pushing that maternally figure aspect. The Covenant item for Rosaria's Fingers reads, Sacred Seal of Archdeacon Klimt who served Rosaria, Mother of Rebirth, equipped to pledge oneself to Rosaria's Fingers Covenant. Rosaria's Fingers collect tongues in her name. Some do it to be reborn, others do it to help comfort their voiceless goddess. Successfully invading someone while part of Rosaria's Fingers Covenant grants you a pale tongue. The description says claiming tongues as trophies was originally the practice of an infamous troop of invaders who offer them to their speechless goddess. Based on these two items, we can tell that Rosaria herself is unable to speak and that she's actually a goddess. Klimt actually shows up again in the same Biden description, saying that he threw away this holy symbol when he put his faith behind him, which I assume is when he joined Rosaria's covenant. One thing I noticed while filming this video was I actually started to look at Rosaria herself a little more closely and I found out that her hair actually outreaches her bed and is like several feet away down the stairs and it's also all kind of miscolored in certain places. I thought she was actually just wearing a kind of elaborate veil but it's actually her hair now that I look at it closely. 
I also noticed that the grub in her lap is visibly different than all the other grubs around here, but I can't make any connections as to why that might be. So once you hand in ten tongues to Rosaria, you'll get the Obscuring Ring. Ring bestowed upon the fingers of Rosaria, invaders who seek tongues for their goddess. Hides the presence of the wearer when far away. It is said that Rosaria, the mother of rebirth, was robbed of her tongue by her firstborn, and has been waiting for their return ever since. This makes me feel like Rosaria is actually in hiding herself. She seems to be hidden away in this cathedral. And at 30 tongues, you actually get the Mangrub Staff. Staff of the Mangrubs who guard Rosaria's bedchamber. Their holy symbol is formed at the tip. Huh? Wielder's luck strengthens effect of sorceries. The Mangrubs have clearly been reborn, but as what? So this just proves that at one point they definitely were humans. Rosaria is able to alter the player's appearance, but it seems her powers go beyond that in being able to make these men monsters. Also, I thought it was interesting that a bunch of the statues in the cathedral are a bunch of disfigured things crying. I'm not sure if this is directly linked to Rosaria, but I just thought it was interesting. After a few pale tongues, a familiar face shows up. Ah, so you've chosen to serve Rosaria after all. She will be pleased with me for finding her another finger. <laughs> but be warned, my friend. Rosaria's fingers need only fetch tongues for their mistress. Otherwise, we are free, unchained. Like Yellowfinger, you can choose to believe that all fingers share camaraderie. But do not force your romance upon the rest of us. <laughs> Long story short, I accidentally attacked this grub on the way to Rosaria, and it drops the weapon and helmet that Yellowfinger uses. So I'm wondering, is this what Yellowfinger has become? Is he no longer human? When you summon him, he looks rather human, or when he invades you, but... I don't know. I don't know what to think about this. So after leaving and coming back, we actually find that Rosari is dead with an item left on her body. And this item is the Black Eye Orb. Arcane Orb left on Rosaria's corpse. Have faith her soul can be retrieved by invading the world of her killer and returning victorious. The black eye is proof of vengeance, but often appears serene as it casts its gates towards Irithyll. Past where you fight Aldrich, and actually the princess's chamber, the black eye orb will start quivering. If we use it, we can invade the world of... Leonard. Or Leonhard, however, I don't fucking know how to pronounce his name. From his mask description, we know that in his youth, Leonard suffered grave burns to his entire body. His face in particular, which he hid beneath the mask, was terribly scalded. He abstained from restoring these injuries even after becoming a finger to Rosaria. And the garb that he wears says he was born into royalty, which is believed to be the reason for his skill in both sorcery and swordsmanship. Indeed, this dingy garb is in fact embroidered with gold thread, betraying its purpose as military wear designed for a noble. Ringfinger Leonard's weapon of choice, a type of shuttle imbued with the power of the moon. 
Leonard set out on a journey of rebirth, but instead decided to serve the goddess as a knight and inherited this weapon. In a lot of ways, this character mirrors Lautrec from the first game, not just in killing someone and then stealing their soul, forcing you to invade them to get it back, but also in the fact that he's absolutely obsessed with this goddess. Also, it's interesting that he would inherit a weapon that has crescent moon imagery, which is often associated with Gwendolyn. I'll go over how Rosaria might be connected to him later. Okay, here's where things get interesting. So you'll actually get Rosaria's soul, which reads, The soul of Rosaria, mother of rebirth, stolen by Ringfinger Leonard. Return this to her extent corpse, and Mother Rosaria will spring back to life, as if nothing happened. Rosaria's soul is unique in that it doesn't share the same shape as all the other boss souls in the game. If you look at it, it's all twisted and malformed and bent, and I have a few theories about this later on. But what you might have not noticed is you can actually transpose her soul into a miracle called Bountiful Sunlight. A special miracle granted by the Princess of Sunlight gradually restores a large amount of HP for herself and those in the vicinity. The miracles of Guinevere, loved as both mother and wife, bestow their blessings upon a great many warriors. Now the question is, why do we get this from Rosaria's soul? What connection does she have with Guinevere? The weaker version of this spell is Bountiful Light, miracle taught to the knights by Gertrude, holy maiden to the queen. The heavenly daughter is said to be the queen's child. I think it's safe to assume that Gertrude is the daughter of Guinevere. Right next to Bountiful Sunlight, we see Soothing Sunlight, a special miracle granted to the maidens of the Princess of Sunlight. The miracles of Guinevere, the princess cherished by all, bestow their blessings upon a great many warriors. This miracle is actually transposed through using the Dancer's Soul, so this means the Dancer is actually a maiden of Guinevere. The Dancer's Crown says, Crown Warden by the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. The mirage-like aura veil is said to be an article of the old gods, permitted only for direct descendants of the old royal family. We know that the holy maiden Gertrude was said to be the daughter of Guinevere, and we know that the dancer is a direct descendant of the old royal family. We also know that the dancer is directly related to the miracles of Guinevere. We find out more about the dancer when we take a look at the armor she wears. Dancer's armor, armor worn by the dancer of the Boreal Valley. The black eyes of the pontiff eventually transform the dancer into a beastly creature, her armor fusing with her own hide. The dancer, being controlled by the pontiff, is but a shadow of what she originally was. The soul of the dancer says the pontiff Sullivan bestowed a double slashing sword upon a distant daughter of the former royal family, ordering her to serve first as a dancer and then as an outrider knight, the equivalent to exile. I think this makes it clear that the Dancer is actually the distant relative of Guinevere. But more importantly, I think the Dancer is actually the firstborn child of Gertrude, the daughter of Guinevere. We know that through Rosaria's soul, we get a miracle that was taught only by Guinevere. The weaker version of this spell was taught to knights by Guinevere's maiden and daughter. The Dancer's soul grants us a miracle that was granted to the maidens of Guinevere. I also noticed that the closer the miracle is to Guinevere, the more orange it is in color. Now that we have all the pieces, we can begin to arrange them in an order that makes sense. Just be warned that this is speculation on my part, so no promises. Rosaria, Mother of Rebirth, was once Gertrude, Holy Maiden and Daughter of Guinevere. Through events that are still unclear, she became a different goddess entirely. Whether this has to do with Aldrich, or the Pontiff Sullivan, or the fall of the gods is unclear, but that's all up to speculation. While recording this, I realized that the white in her hair could actually be a result of the trauma she suffered, or perhaps it's a result of her body growing weak from Aldrich feeding on it, devouring it slowly like the other gods. As the name implies, Rosaria is a mother, one with many children, one with many fingers. These fingers of Rosaria collect tongues as trophies to their voiceless goddess, a goddess whose own tongue was taken by her firstborn daughter. The pontiff was known for turning his own knights into beasts, and when he ordered the dancer to take his mother's tongue, did the dancer resist? Is the tongue of the goddess a token of loyalty? Or is it one final act of disobedience before the dancer lost herself entirely? Is the dancer's loyalty based on a lie? Did she collect her mother's tongue without killing her? Or did she think the Mother of Rebirth would die so easily? If you made it this far, thanks for watching. 
I really want to do a video on Rosaria's lore because it seemed like a bunch of stories we'd already seen. Feel free to hit that like button and leave a comment. Ah! 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 Ah!